23rd of October, 1906. I've been thinking about what led me here, to the Reach and Albion, to this life of adventure. My parents wanted me to become a banker. They had everything planned out, go to the most prestigious private school, study finance at the best university, rub shoulders with all the elite, all that trash. I went along with it. My parents knew best, right? It's all planned, all paid for. Better to not rock the boat and be carried blissfully into a life of riches. Obviously, and thankfully, it didn't work out that way, thanks to the earnest agitator. I hope she's okay. But I've had a draining day, and I need to sleep. I'll continue this later. Comrade Elizabeth. Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we went all the way to the southeast of London to find the Floating Parliament. Went past a lot of horrors like Skyhenge and a lot of things that are ghastly, those weird time bubbles or whatever they are. So we ended the episode right at the Floating Parliament, have not explored it yet. Before I do that though, a little bit of business to take care of. Let's level up. I'm going to pick a metamorphosis. You could no longer be the person you were told to be. Your old life would have ground you beneath it. You had to change. But what was, uh, but was the change slow or sudden? And I'm going to say a blank slate. In order to become what you needed to be, you abandoned your old life. You cast it aside as a snake must shed its skin. So I kind of alluded to that in the note that Elizabeth wrote. Um, I also want to read just a little bit that I wrote, because I write a little bit in Elizabeth's kind of character sheet for every single level up that I take. Um, I couldn't stand my family's callousness for long. One day I ran away and signed up as a steward on the first ship that would take me. So that sort of thing was kind of hinted at in the note as well, that they didn't want to do what their parents wanted them to do and just ran away. Definitely not a gradual growth. No, they just made a totally blank slate. They ran away. Um, but we'll talk more about that in future episodes with future notes. Oh, I also mentioned in one of my blurbs that I wrote for one of the previous level ups that it was 20 years that we um, were given in hours, our stipend of hours that were given to people to go through the Avid Horizon and be kind of the, the new people on the frontier of the sky. That stipend of, I said 20 years, but it was actually 30 years, so just mess that up a little bit. It is 30 years. So a blank slate can give us five hearts and a three veil. What are we up to now? About 25, 25 of our non-primary stats and 59 veil, 50 mirrors. Okay, Cromwell's Gate in the Floating Parliament. I might have read this little blurb right here, but let's go ahead and read it again. The ancient palace drifts through the void, a monument to British democracy and the greatness it believes it brought to the high wilderness. An elderly guard watches with suspicion as you dock, but relaxes at the sight of fellow Londoners. I think I took a poor report, right? And that's what I read? Yeah, looks like it. Yeah, we've already read this part too. Talking about how they shipped the House of Parliament, but then the Queen didn't like the questioning of her authority that came from the Parliament, so had it severed from London and now it's floating out here making laws that nobody cares about. A welcoming party. Smiling, nervous young people greet you as you disembark. Excuse us, the man in the yellow rosette calls. Excuse me, a minute of your time. The smiling man wearing the yellow rosette cuts in first. Captain, join our campaign to celebrate Albion and restore old school patriotism to the land by officially renaming Wednesday as Victoria's Day. Praise her renewed majesty for all she is... The smiling woman wearing the green rosette effortlessly effortlessly cuts in. For killing democracy? For our subjugation? No, Captain. We must make a stand for freedom. We must show the Empress that we will not just sit idle. Join us, as we triumphantly rename her precious Victoria Sponge to the People's Cake. They look at you with a hungry expectancy. <laughs> Excuse me. 
Uh, well, a smiling woman with a green rosette sounded convincing at first. I was like, for killing democracy, subjugation, stand for freedom. Yes. Yes. Sure, the Empress I will not stand idle. Yes. Sounds like a, a tacky kind of person. Like, yes. And then their bid to say F you to the Empress. Rename the Victoria Sponge to the People's Cake. Okay. I don't give a shit. That's not going to do anything. Vote in support of the Empress. Vote in opposition to the Empress. <laughs> Keep walking. What a ridiculous waste of time. The two of them show no interest in following you. They continue looking for new arrivals willing to take part in the process. Presumably ones who don't know full well that Parliament hasn't been in a position to pass laws in years. Politics and knavish tricks. You're advancing your parliamentary career. That's considered an advancement of my career? Okay. This place is sad. <laughs> People that love bureaucracy for bureaucracy's sake. Explore Traitor's Green. It was originally named for Cromwell. Someone clearly holds a grudge. Drunk and disorderly. The replanted gardens are a pleasant place to enjoy a walk, though the buildings are out of bounds to casual visitors. The Empress's Gate is particularly fortified by a heavy chain and a padlock too rusted to ever be unlocked. A few protesters are taking a break to picnic on the lawn, away from the guards. Braver or more foolhardy ones sit on the aisle's edge, swinging their legs over the sky as they eat their sandwiches. It's near them that you spot the fellow in the suit, swaying uncertainly. His footsteps have taken him precariously close to the edge. Nobody seems to have noticed. Sit back and watch Mr. Darwin would no doubt approve. Oh, fuck no. Run over to help. He looks like an MP. But even so... He sees you coming. Startled, he steps back and, with a drunken cry, is gone over the edge. And soon little but a dot in the swirling clouds of the wilderness. <laughs> a small army of civil servants soon swarms from the nearest gate, staring over the edge, agreeing what appalling timing and manners the fellow had, and already arguing over whether the most appropriate memorial would be a bronze plaque on a bench or a new ficus somewhere within the parliamentary halls. A tap on your shoulder distracts you, a tall clerk flanked by two clay men. Excuse us, he glances you up and down. Uh, yes, very suitable. A moment of your time. An election has been called on Perturance. And still advancing my career. Perturance. Election been called on Perturance. I have multiple invites to Perturance. But Perturance isn't here at the floating parliament, is it? Sounded like it was his own port. Anyway, uh, flanked by two clay men. Is this the first mention of clay men in Sunless Skies? I remember they were a pretty big thing in Sunless Sea. Uh, I think I transported a bunch of them. I remember they were really interesting. He sits at a huge mahogany desk in prestigious Downing Corridor. Your conversation doesn't distract him from writing notes in the margins of endless pieces of paperwork. He pauses his scribbling only to sip from a large cup of stone-cold tea, or to scratch his head with the pen's long silver nib. Discuss business. He looks down his nose at you with a grim expression of a headmaster waiting for an excuse to break out his favorite birch rod. Ah, the captain. A moment. Do take a seat. Tea? Ah, yes, I will call for some tea. The loss of our dear minister for... He hesitates, covertly checking a file. Perdurance, uh, yes, is a tragedy, but we must move on. You seem just the sort I'm looking for. Lucid, breathing. Have you considered a career in politics? He holds up a hand. No, I do not care about history or affiliations. A bum in the chair will suffice. The Department of Albion Affairs would be a suitable starting point. If you're interested, I will set the wheels in motion. Visit the former minister's port if you wish to stand for election. You've been invited to become an MP. Yeah. Wow. The politics here matter so little because they have no effect on anything that they're just willing to take anybody for any position. I, I mean, being an MP sounds important, but here, I don't think it would be at all. 
meaningless, I think. Let's observe the people's perpetual protest. A ragtag mob of protesters have set up camp on the lawn. No two want the same thing, but their cacophonous chanting is impressive. Parliament has little power, but at least there's a chance it might listen. That is more than protesters can expect at the throne of ours. The protesters raise their voices with a spirit of camaraderie and a united belief that words can still make the world a better place, with neither anger in their words nor violence in their demands. At three on the dot, the huge portcullis opens and the protesters are served tea, scones, and little cucumber sandwiches cut into triangles. A little recognition of the protesters' ongoing service to this most vital part of British democracy. I mean, protesting is like what we do, but I don't think this is going to do anything here. Elizabeth's just going to ignore the protest. They're very... Well, they don't like bureaucracy or government officials are most of what they usually stand for, so Elizabeth is not really interested in being involved in much that's happening here. Unless it's going to benefit them somehow, or, you know, their cause. Ignore the protest. The crowd continues raging against whatever it is they disapprove of. You leave them to it and return to the quieter, more civilized greenery of the main lawn. Your terror has reduced. Oh, I don't know how much it was at before. Let's ask about the disgraced former courtier. She had friends in Parliament. Perhaps he might be willing to fill in a little of her history for you. The disgraced former courtier, if you don't remember, is the third and final person that we haven't checked up on their story. Um, the third and final person that I can decide to let come through the Home Bureau and actually have a life here. Already followed up on the two others. This is the third one. The MP for Lesser Richmond is puttering about the corridors. She sputters into her handkerchief when you mention the courtier's name. She asks you to wait in her office while she fetches the courtier's friend. A bewhiskered undersecretary appears in the doorway. He offers you the MP's ginger biscuits and a drab of her whiskey. He makes sure the door is firmly closed before he'll tell you anything. Eventually, he finishes, quite red faced. You're given to understand the throne was thoroughly cleaned afterwards. The same cannot be said for the courtier's reputation. Well, out of the three, the courtier sounds like the most trustworthy one. As far as I can tell from the stories. I mean, we had one back in London where their, like, identical twin brother, I think, said that uh, they had done lots of horrible things, so they're kind of out. And then at the most, most serene mausoleum, we talked to them about the nun... And they didn't want them? I don't remember if the nun did something bad, though. But, I mean, this seems fine, I guess. I mean, it doesn't seem like they actually hurt anybody. It's just, you know, they did something improper. Which, I, I mean, Elizabeth doesn't give a shit about that. Helping cautious driver hunt for the verdant fragment. So we've already searched once at... London had a 0% chance at the time. The chance goes up with every place we search. 30% chance of success here. Whoa, success. A taste on the wind. The driver sniffs at the air for any hint of loose, verdant spores dragged in by passing, passing travelers. I can taste something. A fear. And not death, but the loss of something important. The fragment doesn't want to return. It doesn't want to give up what it's become. They close their eyes, focusing. I can taste its design as well. Its host knew of a place called Hostrop Deep, a desolate corner of the sky. It meant to hide there. The deep will be hard to find. When we're close, we'll need to use our scout. The deep lies a long way to the northeast of London. So up here... So this fragment really did want to escape from their creator, from its mother. Because the, the fragments were all sent out to gather information, right? Little helpers to the mother. But this one doesn't care to gather information. It just wants to hide. Desolate corner of the sky, it meant to hide there. 
I wonder why this one's so different from the others. Well, I can't do any of these things. I can't enter any of the houses. House of Lords, Victoria Tower, or the House of Commons. What do I need for this? I need a ministerial appointment for that. Key to the House of Lords for that. Key to Victoria's Tower. Okay. Is that all the things here? Yeah, so... Can't do anything more at Cromwell's Gate. Well, I guess I can't do anything more here at all then, right? I wonder how I get these keys then, from somewhere else. The Bazaar. Locomotive captains visit Parliament begrudgingly. They prefer the company of fellow captains to that of Parliament pontificators. You may find bargains here or fulfill prospects you've claimed. Hmm. Do I want to buy a bunch of bargains? Because I'm, I'm doing so much exploring. I feel like I should save all my hold space for supplies and fuel. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm not going to buy bargains until I'm more established here. Black Rod's Boutique. Operating from a forgotten cupboard-sized office, the once esteemed official known as Black Rod now sells sandwiches from the parliamentary canteen. Oh, wait, I think I've already read that last episode. Can also be persuaded to part with exhibits from Parliament's extensive collection of crockery. Yes. Right, they don't sell fuel, and I'm actually kind of lowish on fuel. I mean, not super low, like I can do a bit of exploring, but I don't feel super confident about that much fuel. In fact, with that much fuel, actually, it'd be a good idea not to stuff my hold as full as possible. Because the more full it is, then the more fuel you burn. So I'll just buy a couple supplies. And that'll be pretty good. Only 15 out of 26 in my hold. Yeah, so did that person who appointed me an MP or whatever, was that a quest or what? Election called. You didn't invite to become an MP. A parliamentary seat is available on Perdurance. Okay, so... I need to go to Perdurance, and that is a totally separate place from here. I have no idea where it is. There we go. <laughs> Little icon wouldn't disappear. Hey, speaking of... I should speak to these people. They might have new things to say. The Incognito Princess. Why is she traveling? We've already talked about this before. For a change, I'm the princess. Yeah, that's not any different. Fortunate Navigator. I think we already know what to do. We need to go to the, the place to pick up their friend's body. Wanted to fulfill their promise to have them go on adventures in the sky. What about the Fatalistic Signalman? Yeah, we've already talked about that. What do I need to do here? Oh, hey. Oh, we can do quite a bit, actually. Debrief him on Carillon. He's simmering with a desire to comment. Past passions. If I were younger, remarks the repentant devil, I would take that place from its current ownership and turn it into a fitting demonstration of the refinements of the soul. You. I could even work with you if I turned your ribs to glass. Bleh. And he's lost in a reverie like a tailor seized with the vision of the ideal trousers for a particularly difficult client. <laughs> when he recollects that you're still present, he adds, you may have noticed that they do not, do not bother to prepare each soul to order. That's the real art, of course. Match the soul to its judgment. They really are passionate about souls. I mean, they are a devil, so it makes sense. Also... I could even work with you if I turned your ribs to glass. Remember that Elizabeth's breast has turned to glass from a sickness they picked up when they, at some point, when they entered the skies so many years ago, she's been very, very, very slowly turning into glass. And they've been hiding it, so the repentant devil doesn't actually know anything about it. It's weird that they would comment, if I turned your ribs to glass, how would you do that? <clears throat> Ask him about the Well of the Wolf. 
He looks his most forbidding when you pry into this question. Wait, the well of the wolf? Is that old Tom's well? Friends past. There is a friend, a colleague from the earliest part of my life. She died, as far as I know, in the fighting before the devils went to Caduceus and escaped the judgments. C Caduceus? Caduceus. But that was then. If she is less dead now, I would expect to find her at the well of the wolf. She always did have a taste for dramatic protests. He looks unapproachably morose for a few minutes, then adds, I have no taste for places that celebrate defeat, but I will go where I must. Right, we're supposed to see old friends that might want the repentant devil dead. That's their quest. So if this friend might be at the well of the wolf, then we definitely haven't been there, which means it's not old Tom's well. Ask him about the friend in London. The Baroness, he's told you that much. My contact in London belongs to the old aristocracy, he says. We'll find her, perhaps, in the ruins of the palace stables, chewing all the gilding off a state carriage ten years past its last parade. If not there, then someplace similar. She does not much like humans, unless they happen to be the crown prince of a dissolved monarchy, or the general of an exiled army. The fact that you're with me will not pacify her. The last time we spoke, I took off one of her legs. So, bring a tribute. Immaculate souls. Okay. I haven't even seen anything pop up about this wall in London, though. Maybe I need the Immaculate Souls before the event even pops up? I don't know how that works. Let's... Let's leave and then... Open up the officers so it stops kicking me back out to the... Stations stuff. Hmm, I can't do anything with that. We're already doing the Incautious Driver's Quest. Rat Brigade. I forgot where we're supposed to go for them. I think maybe Perdurance. Only Albrecht is available for conversation today. Petronella is nursing a hangover. Cinders has, in a gesture of kindness, gone to the galley to seek some kind of food-based cure. Albrecht steeps a tea for you both. This tea is a particular delicacy, from Ocles, Ocles, I believe. This conversation is extensive, erudite, and acerbic. So who who is who in this picture, by the way? Albrecht, they're kind of fancy, right? So this has got to be Albrecht here. Petronella. This is probably Petronella. And then this is Cinders, is my guess. Can I pet the dog? Let's pet the dog. Who's a good dog? Prod your Blemigan. Again. Just as your hand closes on the Blemigan, it reaches a tendril out and gently bats your arm away. I've done that before, but, you know, just wanted to make sure they're still alive. I've got a plan, a really loose one. I want to head back to London. Let's do that by going, like, here to come into the back of London. Hopefully we'll find some cool new stuff along the way. Such as that. That's a wonder. Heck yeah. Oh, hello. I'm just assuming that's a marauder, right? Yeah.
captain's cabin. Barrel of unseasoned hours. Oh, I see the trail of smoke from another vehicle. Oh, it's a dacity. Hey, what's up? UCE Wanderlust. Listen, a crewman hisses. It's good luck if you hear him chime. Who chime? Oh, you need to retrieve the stomach for the nature reserve. Loose tear, uncanny specimen. Uh, let's retrieve the stomach. Tower of Chimes. Oh my god. Oh, a bunch of bats. Okay, I'm just going to be quiet. Waiting for the chime. I think I might have heard it on the way in here. While I was fighting the Kandankri, I'm not sure, but I want to hear it again. Come on. Starman Explorer, I think. Maybe I'll just Leave them to it. <laughs> I can see all these things that look like land masses on the map, but they're kind of like really dark and blend into the background. That's the stuff below us, isn't it? Oh, there's... There's a chiming. Oh, that's a chiming we heard all the way over at the Parliament. Right, that's from the Tower of Chimes. Yeah, I think the land masses correspond to stuff below us. It's kind of cool showing stuff that's there, but, you know, you can't actually interact with it in any way. Hmm, I'll leave that. Mm. I gotta pause the game because I was taking a sip of my coffee. What is that crystal ship? I wonder if it's a ship that's been infected with something that makes it all crystally. Maybe the crystal is sort of like a fungus, in a, in, just in the sense that it infects a thing and takes it over. And that looks like the same sort of crystal that was all around the bodies in the, uh, the, the Bully's Acre. Bully's Acres. Are you an enemy? I'm scared of you. Oh yeah, you're an enemy. What are you? Deranged Dreadnought. Oh. Makes a glass breaking sound. Yeah, so what the hell happened to you? The deranged dreadnought's rabid aggression is stilled now. Your lights reveal glassy growths, encasing sections of sections of its ravaged hull. 
Where the battle has shattered them, they spill across the sky in a plume of shards and dust. Try to recover glass or search the crew cabins. Searching will gain any terrors in addition to other discoveries you make. In this, you may gain planes of stained glass. 33% chance of success. Hmm. The eerie contagion of glass that afflicts the dreadnought may yield valuable materials. If you can find a large enough slab. Hmm. Let's search the crew cabins. Progress to the dreadnought is hazardous. Half of it has been reduced to wreckage. But the remainder is almost entirely vitrified. Glass cracks underfoot. Seven years bad luck with every step. Ah, oh, failure. What was my chance of success? 66. Yeah, it's not great. Desperate measures. The captain's cabin is blocked by a cascade of falling glass that almost reduces you to a mass of crimson ribbons. You're forced to seek answers elsewhere. In another cabin, you find navigation logs. They detail a change of mission away from London. A Ministry of Works permit, stamped and sealed, gives the captain a broad remit to requisitions material to requisitions requisitions materials. I think it's supposed to be requisition materials for the maintenance of the Clockwork Sun. Okay, I can't think of how any of that's relevant to the glass thing. I wonder what power is the clockwork sun. Hmm, I'll leave that a little bit too far off course. You intrepid cavy. I love that little cavy. This looks very industrial. Look at the size of those pipes. The signalman peers from the window at Perdurance. Nice for them as can afford it, I suppose. What exactly is Perdurance? Is it like a home for the rich? I can hear laughing. And lots of sounds of, like, industry. Yeah, what is this place? You need an invitation to get here? I can go under that? Yes. Is this like an oasis for... Or like an exclusive place to live? What's with all the pipes, though? A new port, Captain. Your crew crowd to the windows. Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're going to explore Perdurance, and I guess take our seat as a MP? 